So if you're like the CEO of a business or anything like that, like the goal of the business or should be the goal is to put yourself in the best position to make as much money as possible, bring in as much revenue as possible and all that, right? But however, tonight Dodge has just been going against the grain and all that, like a lot of the, their latest choices and what they're wanting to do with this company, what they're doing right now is not the best choices to say the least, right? We know the EVs and things like that. We know they cut the V8s. So we, we know how people feel about that, but you're at a time where you got to bounce back and they're really not even trying to bounce back. It's to the point where like what, are these people in the front office thinking like at this point you gotta really think like they are being sabotaged to fail and Stellantis wants them gone let's jump in the video and talk about exactly step by step what they've been doing here and why none of it makes sense and why they're really just going to a point where they're trying to cut them and sabotage them for good YouTube family, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. If you are new here, we do a lot of car stuff on this channel. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So you can stay up to date on everything that we got going on that's car related right here. And if you've already done it, big salute to you for locking in and being a part of the channel and supporting me and all that type of stuff. But we'll not hold you too long. Let's go ahead and hop into what we got going on. You see the title? And you see the thumbnail. So as I stated, right, I mean, as the title still stated, it's like, if you're running the company, like the, the main idea, the main thing you should be doing as you're running the company is making the best decisions for your company to make sure that you're making as much money as possible, right? Making the right decisions and putting you in a right place to, to make this happen. You gotta have like the proper strategies, proper plans, all that type of stuff to execute it. So that way your company stays afloat and sells as much as it can sell right and a lot of the stuff that dodge has been doing lately has really been like making me scratch my head probably make you scratch your head because like none of it makes sense like everything that typical car companies do to be successful dodge is doing like the complete opposite granted they like to do their own thing but some things you have to do that makes sense and right now what they're doing makes no sense. Now, I know you, you guys are like the V8 stuff. Well, yes, we know the V8s and whatnot was their bread and butter, but they're gone and they're going to the EV route. But that's not the issue. The issue is not them going the EV route. It's the way they're approaching this just makes no sense from a lot of different angles. So let's talk about some of the things that have been going on that you may or may not have noticed. So the first thing, right, let's get this one out of the way. This is kind of the hot button topic that everybody's been mentioning is definitely the pricing of these cars. Dodge, as everyone knows, released the pricing of these cars. Um, and to say the least, they're extremely expensive. Like it, it's so far out there like I, like why right quick you know summary of, you know, of the price i know we all seen the price and stuff like that so the rt 61.5 and you're looking at the daytona scat pack which would be 75 right seventy five thousand dollars. so pretty much the rt that is going to be the new electric rt is uh fourteen thousand dollars more than the gas version 57 granted yes it's faster but fourteen thousand dollars more, while the Scat Pack is twenty thousand dollars more. The price of seventy-five thousand is nowhere close to what my wide body Scat Pack costs. Like it's not even in the same ballpark at all whatsoever. The bad part about this, right? Chargers that they're going to release later this year. Those cars are going to be the only ones they're going to release. The two-door Charger Daytonas, right? Electric Daytona is going to be the only thing they release this year. And having a car that you're going to release this year that is going to be at least $61,000 prices so many people out of even looking at this car, it, it doesn't make sense at all. Because most manufacturers, what they do, and, and Dodge did this as well, right? They will show you kind of the, in the commercials and the advertising and things like that, they will show you like the top model, the model with all the bells and whistles, things like that, the most expensive model they got. But the price they show you is usually 
the the model the the base model the ball is like thirty thousand twenty five thousand dollars something that's really cheap right like for example if dodge when dodge had these commercials for these cars a lot of times all manufacturers did this right uh, dodge will show you the hellcats the, the high performance vehicles and, and whatnot everything you know the srts and stuff like that but they would give you a pricing for the cheap ones uh and the reason being is like most people buy the v6 most people buy the lower trim cars right people will go into the dealership they don't want to spend hellcat money but they want the car that looks like a hellcat right they don't want the hellcat gas they don't want the hellcat performance they don't want the hellcat horsepower they don't need the hellcat problems at all they don't want the scat pack problems they don't want none of that they, they don't want to spend all this money on gas they want the car that looks like a scat pack that looks like a hellcat so they can drive around or something cool that's how most people are most people don't need performance vehicles both of these cars the, these cars are both performance ev cars right because the daytona rt it is a upgraded version of what they could be doing and the scat pack has a um a direct connection kit installed on top of that as well so these cars aren't even their lowest tier ones these are the upper tier cars that they're putting out first people aren't searching for sixty thousand dollar cars like that especially with the dodge brand people have been losing their minds because scat packs are going for sixty thousand dollars when a few years ago you can cop them for 40 and, and whatnot right but now you're saying that for an RT, regardless of how much more horsepower this car has, you're, you're paying $60,000 off gate just to get into the car. That right there alone just gets people turned off by it. Like you can't advertise that to anyone. You can't say, well, our cheapest EV car is $61,000. They're gonna go elsewhere for sure. If you're even cross shopping a car that's an EV in that price range, right? The, the main company that comes to mind is gonna be Tesla. Tesla has what the all wheel drive car um tesla i forgot the model of it but sixty eight thousand dollars that's going to do zero to sixty in 3.1 seconds which is going to be faster than what the uh charger daytona scat pack is going to do and that's going to be the top of the line car right the, the, well for now um and or, or the plaid right the plaid is going to be eighty three thousand dollars which is for tesla uh, i think that's like rated at like 10 like a thousand forty horsepower stuff like that I mean, your, your, your Charger Scat Pack, Daytona, that is $75,000. I mean, you can spend a few more thousand dollars and get Tesla's top car that is way faster than that. Like, the performance isn't there. The price isn't there. The price doesn't make sense. And you've already turned people off by even going get this car just because of the fact you priced it at $60,000 to start out with. Honestly, the price is, is crazy because... The Scat Pack, the Daytona Scat Pack, is not even the top trim. They still got another top trim that's coming out. They're supposed to come out with the Banshee, which is supposed to be well over a thousand horsepower EV car. And if we're talking nearly eighty thousand dollars for Daytona Scat Pack, that Banshee is going to be over a hundred thousand dollars, like off gate. Like who in the world is paying a hundred thousand dollars for a for a charge? I don't care if it's electric or not, but still, that's insane. And another thing as well, the cars that are coming this year, the, the 2024 models of these, these are gonna be called like the first edition models, right? The thing about these cars, they are gonna come pre spec They're gonna come already pre spec with colors, they're gonna come pre spec with the features and stuff in them. You can't go to the dealership and order a 2024 car and get it customized to how you want it, right? So you're going there paying 60, 70, thousand dollars for these cars you probably got to have to add in dealership marker because you know we got to get their cut in there right for a car that you can't even customize to get the features that you actually want in the car not everybody cares about you know carbon fiber stuff everywhere not everybody cares about the whole performance recorder thing not everybody cares about all that stuff not everybody cares about getting three season performance tires not everybody cares about the black top package stuff of that nature stuff that's going to come pre-installed with some of these cars for 2024 people don't care about that so now they're gonna pay for stuff that they don't want and if they start cross shopping other evs for around that cost for around that price or whatever they could probably look elsewhere like i can go over here to tesla and build the car how i want it and pay exactly what i want without having to get extra stuff that i don't need and i kind of touched on this as well no company out there releases a performance car first before releasing the economical cars or whatnot right no matter what the brand is i mean even with dodge most people buy the v6s right most people buy those cars granted there's people that get the scat packs i know a lot of people that are probably watching probably have the more performance cars stuff like that most people outside of you know us people that like performance cars 
they get the regular car. They don't care about all of the performance and stuff like that. Like if you go take a ride right now and see Chargers driving around, most of them are going to be V6s. And that's the thing about it. And the V6s are the cars that you move that 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 get the most revenue because a lot of people buy those. A lot of people that are not Dodge people will buy the V6 Charger simply because of the fact it looks good, it it, it drives fine, and things of that nature. They don't care about all the horsepower and things like that. So Dodge is already killing themselves by coming out with these Chargers that is 500 and 600 horsepower. People don't care about all that. If they would have came out, if they're gonna come out with EVs first, right? Come out with the cheaper ones too. Give people the option to get the cheaper ones. They're they're gonna come out with more. Dodge is already planning to do this. They're gonna come out with some EVs that are gonna be much cheaper than this. Probably maybe a forty in the thirty thousand dollar range potentially. I, I'm not thirty is gonna be kind of cheap. I don't know if we'll get down to thirty, but definitely probably in the forty thousand dollar range, somewhere around there. Those are gonna be the ones that more people are gonna be willing to buy. Like people don't care about all the horsepower. If you're buying an EV. You're more most people are buying the EV for the range and for the ability to not have to buy gas and things like that. If when you start getting into these EVs with all this power and stuff like that, that range is gone. You just have a fast car that doesn't have range, right? Just, I mean, just just like the the ice engines, right? I mean, the more the more powerful the engine, the less fuel efficient it is, the less you can drive it before you have to get gas. So. It doesn't make sense for Dodge to come out with these high performance EVs first. Like, for example, like if Ford would have come out with the GT500 first, how many people are going to buy a GT500 for $80,000? I think it's $80,000, stuff like that. Not many people, right? Most people buy the V6 Mustangs, the EcoBoost, stuff like that. They buy your GTs, the lower trim ones, right? Same thing with Camaro. Most people, they don't buy the ZL1 Camaro. Most people buy the V6 Camaro, the SS, stuff like that. The lower trim, more affordable car. People don't need all that horsepower. So why, if you are struggling or will struggle to make sales with a lineup that doesn't have cars that are appealing to a lot of people, why would you bring out a high performance EV car that is $60,000 and don't offer anything cheaper for the people that don't care about like that. Like I said, $60,000 takes a lot of people off the market for buying these cars and that's gonna kill their sales right there. Another reason people buy cars is practicality, right? Another thing with these 2024 chargers, all of these chargers will be two door chargers. And I know the Mopar peers out there are happy that Dodge is bringing back the two-door charger, which is great. I have no problems with the two-door charger at all. Um, the only issue is this, and Dodge's sales numbers even prove this as well. Regardless of how people feel that a charger should not be four-door, the four-door charger outsells the two-door Challenger, and the Challenger is the car that pretty much replicates the car from the 70s, like front to back and all that type of stuff, same body lines and everything. The four-door charger kills the Challenger in sales almost doubled. The Charger kills the Camaro in sales. The Charger kills the Mustang in sales. Simply because of the fact that four doors appeals to a lot of people. It is a practical car. Now, yes, I have a Charger. I used to have a Challenger. The four door Charger is way more practical. I can fit more people here um, than I can in the Challenger. I had, nothing, I had no issue with the Challenger at all, but the Charger just fits the bill for me. A lot of people would rather buy a four door sedan then a two-door coupe and dodge is pushing this two-door charger to the front and, and giving them the own that's going to be the only option right yes i know dodge is coming out with the four-door charger later on but they're not coming out with the four-door charger until sometime next year i think they're not coming out with it until like second half of next year so that is a whole year of dodge putting these cars out and not have a four-door option your only other four-door option with Dodge is the Hornet, and nobody cares about that SUV like that. That's priced already priced out of people's price range, and you have the Durango, which not everybody's gonna get an SUV. Stupid, <laughs> stupid sales choice to, to put the two-door out first. All they had to simply do is put the four-door out with the two-door, and I guarantee the four-door is going to outsell the two-door easily. And also, and I said this in a previous video as well, the EV should not have been released first. I understand that guys, what they're trying to do is get these EVs out there, make some sales with it and, and things of that nature. They should have did one or two things, either release the EVs later or release the EVs with the n six engines together at the same time. I've been in multiple Reddit posts, multiple Facebook groups, uh, multiple Instagram posts, um, any social media, anything like that. Even though the V8s are gone, even though people are upset that they, they are not selling V8s anymore, 
there are pe there are a lot of people out there willing to buy the inline six there are a lot of people to get a car that has 550 horsepower more horsepower than the 392 right now more torque than the 392 right now they they will buy that car everybody's saying that I, the inline six will sell it will sell far better than the ev car and for a company that is going to struggle with sales and and already is struggling bring out the inline six hurricane engine first if they would have brought that out first people would have bought the car people have been ready for new interior new exterior and things like that and more power right and this car offers all of that you got the more power you got the new interior you got the new exterior you got everything that this that people are wanting and they're not releasing the inline six engine first they are missing out on a huge opportunity by not putting that car out first or put it out with the ev the evs are going to sit on a lot they're way too expensive and people don't want electric vehicles they simply don't they're already mad about the hemis going away but they'll be willing to take the inline six a lot of people have said that this last thing is the icing on the cake right so with this ev car we know it doesn't have an engine that means the front of the car the front is in an additional storage area however dodge says you can't get the front the the front trunk whatever unless you buy the plus package you know dodge is the first to do this but the front is optional you every single electric vehicle has a front it's like part of the car this doesn't make sense right so dodge is going to make you pay what for the plus package four thousand nine hundred dollars almost five thousand dollars right and if you don't get the plus package with this ev car you won't have a front I, I i don't i guess they just will cover it up or not put it in there or whatnot you won't have a storage area in the front of the car which is the main selling point for an ev car and I don't know why. I don't know why they're doing this. I have no clue. That doesn't make sense. I mean, that ugly Cybertruck has a front and you don't have to pay extra for it. All the Teslas has a front and you don't have to pay extra for it. The, that Mach-E, the Mustang Mach-E has a front. You don't have to pay extra for it. Pretty much every single electric vehicle has a front, but you don't have to pay extra for it. But Dodge is going to make you pay $5,000 to have a front in your car that it should already have from factory because it's an electric vehicle. That right there kind of shows you what mode Dodge is in right Right now they just make decisions on things that makes no sense at all whatsoever like already space there just to make a storage compartment but they're gonna charge you to have storage in the front of your car that every ev already has that's why dodge is done that's why i have to believe that they are purposely trying to sabotage dodge to go under so they can cut their losses and be done with it for good there's there's no other rhyme or reason why they are making these choices and those are my thoughts right i mean like, like there's there's no there's there's no logical explanation for some of the things they're doing there's literally data and stats to show that people buy four-door cars more than two-door cars there's literally people in every single post saying they would rather buy the inline six and they're waiting for the inline six versus the evs these EVs are going to hit the dealership lot and sit there because no one wants the, a $60,000 car when he goes shop at Tesla, get one for around the same price. It's going to be faster than that one. Dodge claims to be this company that gives you high horsepower and no one else can do it. And a lot of people are killing them at their own game, which is kind of silly, right? There's no, like I said, there's no logical explanation for what's going on at that company besides sabotage. You, you can't sit there and, and just ignore every you can't ignore all the numbers that are pointing right in your face you can't do that and think everything's gonna be cool like i said i'm gonna get I, I give dodge a couple more years and that's it if this could be the final nail if that inline six car comes out the inline six uh, hurricane car comes out right and that thing is going to be like sixty thousand dollars as well they're done they are going to be done and, then, and that's and that's it Sixty thousand dollars is insane from a, from a car company that was giving you scat packs for around forty thousand dollars, and now here we are, twenty twenty four, about to be twenty twenty five, and these cars, Dodge Dodge is not affordable anymore. I don't know who they think they are. You Dodge, you are Dodge. What you think you are? What you think you, you think you're Mercedes? What? Come on, man. I know people are like, well, they used to be Mercedes. This is a Mercedes chassis. Man, y'all know what I'm talking about, man. Y'all know exactly what I mean by that. Like, I don't know wh who they think they are, but they this ain't the Dodge that we, we're used to at all. And everyone is, is ticked off about it. <laughs> but 
they're making these decisions, man. Let me know y'all thoughts in the comments below, man. If y'all made it this far, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We talk cars. We fix, well, I want to say fix cars. I'm not a mechanic. But if I got something I messed up on my car, I'll try to fix it and stuff like that. We do mods and all type of stuff. So make sure you subscribe to be, um, you know, in the loop of all that and be up to date as everything happens on this channel, man. We will catch you on the next one. We are out. Cut it.